on World War Snap. Revive Drivery Pakistan shuts key borders crossing with Afghanistan after guards exchange fire. Trump on trial. New York State judge rejects former President Donald Trump's bid to delay civil fraud lawsuit. Race to the moon. Japan joins moon race with successful rocket launch after three postponements. Still rocking. Legendary rock band The Rolling Stone announces comeback following a two-decade hiatus. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening, you are joining us on World News Tonight. We begin this Thursday night with fresh military provocations on both sides of Afghanistan and Pakistan. The main border crossings between Afghanistan and Pakistan has been closed after security forces from both countries exchange fire. Pakistan closed a key northwestern border crossing with Afghanistan after border guards from the two sides exchanged fire, while elsewhere near the border in northern Pakistan clashes killed four Pakistan soldiers and 12 militants. Separately, mortar fire hit a house in Pakistan near the Afghan border, killing five Pakistanis, a mother and her four children. It was not immediately clear who fired the mortar and police were investigating the attack on the North Vazistan district of Khyber Pakhwantwa province. Abdul Martin, a spokesman for Afghanistan's Interior Ministry, confirmed the clash between Afghan and Pakistani forces. He said officials from both sides were trying to find out the cause and were seeking ways to prevent such clashes. Pakistani authorities said dozens of trucks carrying perishable items, including vegetables and fruits, were waiting on both sides of the border for the reopening of the Tokham crossing which is a vital commercial artery and a trade route to Central Asian countries for Pakistan. The border closure came two days after caretaker Pakistani Prime Minister Anwar ul Haq Kakar said US military equipment left behind during the American withdrawal from Afghanistan had fallen into militant hands and made its way to Pakistani Taliban, who are allied with the Taliban in Afghanistan. Afghanistan has never recognized the porous borders that runs through the Pashtun heartland and dilutes the power of Afghanistan's largest ethnic group on both sides. Pakistan says it has completed fencing along 97% of the border to stop cross-border attacks and smuggling. Pakistan also accuses the Afghan Taliban for providing sanctuaries to Pakistani militants who are living in Afghanistan. The newest contender joining the moon race is none other than Japan. Japan launched a rocket carrying a small lunar lander and an X-ray telescope that will explore the origins of the universe. Japan launched its lunar exploration spacecraft hoping to become the world's fifth country to land on the moon early next year. Japan has joined the race to the moon. Early Thursday it launched a lunar lander from a spaceport in the south of the country. It's officially dubbed the Smart Lander for Investigating Moon or SLIM. Less officially, it's called the Moon Sniper. That's because Japan's space agency, JAXA, plans to land the craft within 100 meters of its target site. Agency President Hiroshi Yamakawa spoke after the launch. Until now, moon landers land where they could land on the moon. But from now on in the future, we will land on a spot where we want to. And that is what we're trying to prove. Right now, the moon is getting to be a busy place. Some two weeks ago, a Russian probe crashed on approach. An Indian craft then successfully landed and deployed a rover. Japan's own lunar track record isn't great. Two landing attempts over the past year both failed. Now there's a lot riding on the new mission for JAXA and Japanese industry. The rocket that carried the lander aloft is made by Japan's Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, but the country's recent launches have been dogged by a series of failures, casting doubt on its space ambitions. Success this time would make Japan only the fifth country to land on the lunar surface. It would also bolster its hopes of playing a part in NASA's planned return to the moon later this decade. JAXA hopes the Moon Sniper will begin its touchdown in February next year. More than 60 Brazilian cities have been rocked by what scientists are calling an extra-tropical cyclone. At least 31 are dead and thousands are homeless after catastrophic flooding swept out entire communities. 
Tonight, the view from above showing entire cities underwater after a cyclone tore through southern Brazil. The death toll climbing to at least 31 and more than 2,000 people left homeless by the devastating floods. One woman in agony over her loss. Another woman describing her ordeal as she climbed up to a neighbor's apartment while others called out to be rescued. She says it was frightening. People on roofs were asking for help. It was a scene in a horror movie. Forecasters calling the weather event an extra tropical cyclone, a fierce storm packing heavy rains, strong winds, and even spawning a tornado. Volunteers struggling to link arms and pull in boats with terrified residents to safety after they were plucked from the rising waters. Emergency crews using jet skis to search the streets for survivors and helicopter teams delivering those rescued by air on stretchers to waiting ambulances. Firefighters even carrying out people on their backs while trudging through several feet of water. But despite the survivors, the grim reality of death overwhelming one community where government officials say 15 victims were discovered inside one home. 80% of structures in that town now submerged. Já configurando a situação de maior volume de mortes numa um evento climático do estado do Rio Grande do Sul. Drone video revealing the destruction left behind once the waters receded in some areas. This man picking through the debris that was once his home. Estamos tentando recuperar um pouco que sobrou, sobrou pouco, nada, nem roupa. The local governor asking for more resources from the federal government, including more rescue helicopters, while residents plead for help and prepare for more days of rainfall ahead. More legal troubles for Donald Trump. A New York state judge has rejected Donald Trump's bid to delay a scheduled trial in a civil fraud lawsuit, accusing him, family members and his business of overvaluing assets by billions of dollars. A judge on Wednesday rejected Donald Trump's bid to delay a civil fraud trial set to begin next month. New York State Attorney General Letitia James filed a lawsuit against the former president and his two adult sons, accusing them of falsely overvaluing family business assets. Trump has sought to stall the trial and argued it should be briefly delayed until three weeks after the judge ruled on motions from both sides. But in a one-sentence order, the judge called Trump's arguments for a delay, quote, completely without merit. Lawyers for Trump and the other defendants did not immediately respond to requests for comment. The office of Letitia James also had no immediate comment. The indictment speaks for itself. The New York lawsuit accuses Trump and others of overvaluing assets over the course of a decade in annual financial statements in an effort to obtain better terms on loans and insurance. James said the fraud enabled Trump to inflate his net worth by more than $2.2 billion and that he should be found liable for fraud even before a trial began. The lawsuit is seeking at least $250 million and to bar Trump and his sons from leading their family business. The defendants have denied wrongdoing and Trump has called the case part of a partisan witch hunt. We did nothing wrong at all. The civil trial is set to begin October 2nd and will be followed over the next year by a series of civil and criminal trials. Trump has pleaded not guilty to charges in four separate federal and state criminal indictments, including two indictments for attempting to reverse his 2020 election loss. But despite his legal problems, Trump has a dominating lead for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination. Staying in the USA, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken headed to Ukraine with another billion dollar aid package to the country, but this time including depleted uranium munitions. However, the top diplomat's visit was overshadowed by a devastating Russian missile attack. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made a surprise visit to Ukraine on Wednesday local time and announced an additional $1 billion U.S. dollars of support. Blinken pledged ongoing U.S. support for Ukraine and stated that plans are in place for support in the areas of energy, security and humanitarian assistance in addition to military support and reconstruction efforts. We will continue to stand by Ukraine's side and today we're announcing new assistance totaling more than $1 billion in this common effort. That includes $665.5 million 
in new military and civilian security assistance. Meanwhile, the support package includes depleted uranium munitions which are designed to pierce thick tank armor. The munitions used is controversial due to possible health risks. It is the first time the U.S. has provided depleted uranium munitions. The support package includes other anti-tank weapons as well as ammunition, air defense systems and demining assistance. I discussed longer-term sustainable security arrangements which will provide ongoing security assistance and modern military equipment across land, air, sea and cyberspace, as well as training and intelligence sharing. Secretary Blinken, in his fourth visit since the war began, has expressed great optimism, noting significant progress in Ukraine's counter-offensive. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba also emphasized the strong support of the United States, describing it as a robust partner. If the West cannot win in this war, then what is the war that the West can win? And when I say the West, I include Ukraine to this, to this list as well. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, an attack on a market street in Konstantinovka in Ukraine's Donetsk region killed at least 17 people, including a child. We'll be back with more world news after this short commercial break. To the road to the White House. President Biden is in campaign mode as Biden names new top aides to his campaign. President Joe Biden is building up his 2024 campaign with a handful of new senior aides focused on communications, policy, and surrogate operations. Amariusa, the DNC's National Press Secretary and Rapid Response Director, will be brought on to serve as a Director of Rapid Response for Biden's re election bid. Maria Carolina Casado, who goes by Mecca and is the DNC's director of Hispanic media, is likewise taking on a role with that title for Biden's campaign. Grace Randeau, who was previously director for economic policy and labor at the National Economic Council, will work as Biden campaign's policy director. Carla Frank, who was recently special assistant to the president and deputy political director at the White House, will be the director of the National Advisory Board and surrogate operations for the 2024 campaign. Biden has run what his advisors have said is a purposefully lean campaign at this early stage of the 2024 presidential election. China reportedly banned officials at central government agencies from using or bringing iPhones and other foreign branded devices into the office. The move suggests that China, which is one of Apple's biggest markets, is unwilling to spare any US company in the fight to boost homegrown technology. China has banned officials at central government agencies from using iPhones for work. They also won't be allowed to bring them into the office. That's according to a Wednesday report by the Wall Street Journal, which cited people familiar with the matter. The orders were reportedly given out in recent weeks, but it wasn't clear how widespread they were. There was no immediate response from Chinese officials or Apple. If confirmed, the new move would mark another escalation of US-China tensions, which often focus on tech. Washington has already imposed strict controls on the export of cutting-edge chips to China while Beijing has restricted shipments from firms like Boeing. It also wouldn't be the first time that China has cracked down on high-profile foreign technology it deems suspicious. Back in 2021, some officials were reportedly banned from driving Tesla cars onto government compounds and other sensitive facilities. Security services were said to be concerned that the many cameras fitted to the cars could be used for espionage. On to more weather updates now. From fires to floods, Greece continues to be pounded by Storm Danielle for the second consecutive day. At least three people have died and four were missing after torrential rain flooded homes and businesses and destroyed infrastructure in central Greece. Torrential rains have collapsed this roadway, cutting off access to the neighborhood. 
The normally picturesque small village of Calanera now resembles scenes from a disaster movie. Similar signs of destruction can be found in Volos a little further north. Mudslides caused this house to collapse, while here a river has overflowed, uprooting trees and carrying away everything in its path. From Volos is burning, we have switched to Volos is drowning. Except that here, people are drowning and properties are being lost. Roads covered in mud, landslides, flooded cars. In one region of Greece, more rain fell in 24 hours than normally falls in a year. The torrential rains weren't limited to Greece. In Sarajevo and Bulgaria, this bridge buckled while rivers overflowed their banks. A little further north, it's hard to tell there's a bridge here as the water washes over it. While the sun might have been shining in Istanbul on Wednesday, the city was in cleanup mode as workers at this warehouse tried to bail out the water. The water flooded our parking areas and our vehicles were submerged. Our vehicles have water in them all the way into the engines. We're trying to clean them up. In these three countries, the damage has been considerable, but the human toll could be even higher as rescue teams continue to search for the missing. No end in sight for the Spanish soccer scandal. Spanish football star Jenny Hermoso has filed a legal complaint over an unsolicited kiss by Football Federation's boss Luis Rubiles, following Spain's win in the Women's World Cup. Spanish soccer star Jenny Hermoso has filed a criminal complaint against Football Federation boss Luis Rubiales over his unsolicited kiss at the World Cup. That's according to the National Prosecutor's Office on Wednesday. With the complaint, Rubiales could face criminal charges in addition to the ongoing inquiry by Spain's top sport court for serious misconduct and an investigation by FIFA, which has provisionally suspended him from office for 90 days. Hermoso gave her testimony Tuesday, and the complaint will be processed as soon as possible, the prosecutor said. Last month, the prosecutor for Spain's high court said that Rubiales could face a sexual assault charge, which carries a prison term of between one and four years, if Hermoso were to file a complaint. Hermoso said she did not want to be kissed, and that she felt, quote, vulnerable and a victim of aggression. No voy a dimitir. Rubiales, no who has so far refused to resign despite heavy pressure, no said the kiss was, quote, spontaneous, mutual, euphoric, no and consensual. Neither Hermoso's representatives nor Rubiales were immediately available for comment. Welcome back. For more news, it's Take Care on the World in a minute. British police said they had issued an urgent appeal to find a former soldier suspected of terrorism offences. Daniel Abid Khalif is awaiting trials on charges relating to terrorism and the official secret act. An Arizona police officer is being hailed a hero after a woman whose baby stopped breathing rushed to him for help. An archaeological site in Lima, Peru has revealed a thousand-year-old mummy belonging to the Yichma culture. German authorities have closed Rotter Lake to swimmers due to poisonous blue-green algae springing up amid late summer temperatures around 86 degrees Fahrenheit. After the devastating wildfires that tore through Maui, residents are using slack key music to bring the community back together. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by watching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in London, where the legendary English rock band The Rolling Stones announced their comeback in almost two decades. Thank you for watching. Good night.